Welcome to lesson four, the kin to assignment, kinematics formulas. You probably won't have your booklet out so you can take notes as we go. Introduction, always carry out the following steps. Always write a list of variables, select and write down the formula. Then before you put numbers in, you must rearrange to solve for the unknown variable. Once that's complete, I want you to substitute numbers in and solve, and you should write a statement but it is not necessary. We know from grade 10 that area under the curve in a velocity time graph gives displacement of the object over that time period. We have also determined that an object undergoing constant acceleration will produce a linear velocity time graph. So what we see here is a velocity time graph. There is constant acceleration. And the object has gone from 10 meters per second to 30 meters per second over a 30 second time period. So we're going to calculate the area under this graph to find out how far this object has gone, what its displacement is. Now it's made up of a triangle and a rectangle. So first I'm going to calculate the area of the triangle. And the area of a triangle is half base times height. So half multiplied by the base, which is 30 seconds, multiplied by the height, which is 20 meters per second. And that gives me a total of 300 meters inside that shape. Now for the rectangle. Area of a rectangle is length times height. The length is 30 seconds. The height is 10 meters per second. And 30 multiplied by 10 gives me 300. So that's 300 meters inside of the rectangle. Both of those objects are located under the graph. So if I add those two areas together, that tells me the displacement of the object in that 30 second time period is 600 meters. Now, through the magic of PowerPoint, I'm going to take that triangle and rip the top off of it. I'm then going to rotate it. I'm going to slide it to the left and then slot it down into that gap. And that is now made a rectangle whose height is my average velocity. Now I'm going, to, I'm going to calculate the area of that rectangle. Again, area is length times height. The length is 30 seconds, and the height is the average velocity. To get the average velocity, I would have to take the initial velocity and the final velocity and divide it by 2. And the initial velocity was 10 meters per second. The final velocity was 30 meters per second. If I add those together, that gives me 40 meters per second. Divided by 2 gives me the average. And that means that my height is 20 meters per second. That was the average velocity of the object over the 30 seconds. And 30 seconds multiplied by 20 meters per second gives me 600 meters. So that brings us to the first formula that we're going to use inside of kinematics 2. Displacement is equal to the average velocity multiplied by time. So displacement equals initial velocity plus final velocity divided by 2 multiplied by time. Now we're going to take a look at the exact same formula and we're going to derive it mathematically. So I'm going to bring that graph up. When we look at that graph, we're going to have to realize that our initial velocity is equal to 10 meters per second and our final velocity is equal to 30 meters per second. The area underneath the graph is equal to the displacement and we had a rectangle and we had a triangle. So for that rectangle, the length is equal to the total amount of time. The width in this case is equal to vi. When we look at the triangle, it's equal to half base times height, half of the base. And the base is equal to time. And the height is equal to the difference between VF and VI. So height is VF subtract VI. Now we need to rearrange this to wind up with the same formula we got in the previous example. First thing I'm going to do is distribute half t into the brackets. That gives me displacement equals tvi plus half tvf, subtract half tvi. 
I've got two terms that contain vi, and I'm going to put them together. So now I have tvi subtract half tvi. And if I have a whole tvi, and I'm subtracting half of a tvi, that leaves me with half the tvi. Now I can take out my GCFs. Both terms have a half and a t. So that gives me vi plus vf multiplied by half t. Now multiplying by a half is the same as dividing by 2. I prefer the formula the way it is written now. I think it's easier to deal with, but the way it is presented to us in the curriculum is vi plus vf divided by 2, maybe because that tells us for sure that's the average velocity, and then that's multiplied by t. Now to formula number two. Displacement equals initial velocity multiplied by time plus half at squared. Now we are going to derive this formula from three formulas that we have hopefully accepted to be true. First one is that our average velocity is equal to our displacement divided by time. We also agree that the average velocity, if there is constant acceleration, is initial velocity plus final velocity divided by 2. That will give us the average. And the third formula is that acceleration equals change in velocity divided by time. So the formula that we want in the end is displacement equals vit plus half at squared. And these are the three formulas we're going to use to do that. And right off the top, I noticed that I have v average in two of the formulas. And that is not in my final equation, so I want to get rid of v average. Since v average is equal to d over t, and v average is also equal to vi plus vf over 2, it stands to reason that d over t equals vi plus vf over 2, since both sides are equal to the same thing, v average. I have now effectively eliminated v average, but I've got a new problem that I recognize that I have vf. And I need to get rid of vf. And how do I get rid of vf? Because vf isn't located anywhere else. Although, if I look at the other equation, I have delta v. And we know that change is always final subtract initial. So I'm going to substitute in vf subtract vi for delta v. Now I have vf in both of these equations. But in order to do the same thing I did to get rid of v average, I'm going to have to isolate vf in both of these equations. So we'll start on the left hand side. I've got vi plus vf over 2. First thing I want to do is move the 2, so I will multiply both sides by 2. Now I have vi plus vf. vi is adding to vf, so if I want to get vi away from vf, I will subtract vi from both sides. Now vf has been isolated. On the right-hand side, I have vf subtract vi over t. If I want to get vf by itself, first thing I do is multiply both sides by t. Now I've got vf subtract vi, since vi is subtracting from vf. To get vf by itself, I'm going to have to add vi to both sides. Now, vf has been isolated in both of these equations. And since vf equals 2d over t subtract vi, and vf equals at plus vi, that means 2d over t subtract vi equals at plus vi. Now, to finish this off, I have to get d by itself. First thing I'm going to do is move the vi. vi is subtracting from 2d over t, so I'm going to add vi to both sides. When I do that, I wind up with at plus vi plus vi on the right-hand side. And 1vi plus 1vi gives me 2vi's. Now I've got 2d over t on the left-hand side, and to get d by itself, I'm going to multiply both sides by t. Now the t on the right-hand side has to multiply by the entire right-hand side, which means we're going to have to distribute the t inside the brackets. So at becomes at squared, and 2vi becomes 2vit. Last thing I have to do is move that 2. 
So I can divide both sides by 2, or the same thing as dividing both sides by 2 is multiplying both sides by a half. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply both sides by a half. And that half, again, is going to have to distribute into the brackets on the right-hand side. So at squared becomes half at squared, and 2vit becomes vit. And we wind up with our final formula that we were looking for, displacement equals vit plus half at squared. We're going to prove that final velocity squared equals initial velocity squared plus 2ad by using two formulas that we've already accepted. The displacement equals average velocity multiplied by time, and that acceleration equals change in velocity divided by time. Both of these formulas contain time, so we are going to isolate time so that we can eliminate it, because time is not in the equation that we want to prove. So starting with displacement equals average velocity multiplied by time, I want to get t by itself. The first thing I'm going to do is divide by t. Now, you might say, Mr. Sklar, you always say in class, we want to make sure that we get the variable we're looking for in the numerator, and we want to get it by itself. Now we are purposely putting it in the denominator, but hold on, you'll wait, wait just a second, and you'll see why we're going to do this. Now I wind up with two fractions. And when I have a fraction on either side of my equation, I can take the reciprocal of both sides. So time is now back in the numerator where, where we want it. And to get it by itself, to isolate it, we're going to multiply both sides by displacement. Now time has been isolated. It's equal to 2d over vi plus vi. Now for the other formula, acceleration equals change in velocity divided by time. I don't want change in velocity. So I'm going to substitute in Vf subtract Vi for delta V. To get T by itself, first thing I'm going to do is put it into the numerator by multiplying both sides by T. And then I'll get T by itself by dividing both sides by acceleration. Since time is equal to 2D over Vi plus Vf, and time is equal to Vf subtract Vi over acceleration, it can then be concluded that Vf subtract Vi over acceleration equals 2d over Vi plus Vf. Now to make this current formula look like the final formula that appears on our formula sheet. First thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides by acceleration. Then I'm going to multiply both sides by vi plus vf. Now vi plus vf multiplied by vf subtract vi means I'm going to have to FOIL. So first, vi multiplied by vf gives me vi vf. vi multiplied by negative vi gives me negative vi squared. vf multiplied by vf gives me vf squared. And Vf multiplied by negative Vi gives me negative Vif, and that is all equal to 2AD. Vif and negative Vif can come together and cancel out. That means I now have negative Vi squared plus Vf squared equals 2AD. Now, if I add Vi squared to both sides, I wind up with Vf squared equals Vi squared plus 2AD. Example 1. Find final velocity if a linear change in velocity lasting 5 seconds covers a distance of 27 meters east and the initial velocity is 13.8 meters per second east. So I'm looking for Vf because it asks me to find the final velocity. It tells us the whole process lasts 5 seconds. So our time is five seconds. It also says they cover a distance of 27 meters east. 27 meters east, well, that's distance with a direction, so that gives us displacement. Displacement is 27 meters east, and it tells us the initial velocity is 13.8 meters per second east. 
Now I want to reference my formula sheet and see if I have a formula that contains VF, T, D, and VI. And I do. Displacement equals average velocity multiplied by time. The first step to isolate VF is moving T. And I'm going to move T by dividing both sides by T. So the T's will factor out. I now have D over T equals VI plus VF over 2. Now to move the 2, I will have to multiply both sides by 2. The 2's will factor out. I then have 2D over T equals VI plus VF. The last thing I have to do is move VI. And VI is adding to VF, so to move VI, I will subtract VI from both sides. Now I have VF isolated. It's equal to 2D over T subtract VI. Now that VF is isolated, I can substitute my numbers in. I will start off with the multiplication and division. So 2 multiplied by 27 divided by 5 gives me 10.8. Two significant figures because I had two significant figures in 27 meters, two significant figures in 5.0 seconds. So the answer of 10.8, I underline the 8 because it is not significant. Now I'm going to carry out my subtraction. 10.8 subtract 13.8 gives me negative 3 meters per second. Not 3.0 because I was subtracting and 10.8 ran out of significant figures at the decimal. 13.8 ran out one after the decimal. So since 10.8 ran out at the decimal, my answer is only good to the decimal. So I wind up with negative 3 meters per second with only one significant figure. In my variable list, east is the direction that I've chosen to be positive. I have a negative answer. So if my answer is negative 3 meters per second east, I will switch that to west. And I have a final answer of 3 meters per second west. Example 2. What is the displacement of a bird that is flying with an initial velocity of 33.3 meters per second north and begins accelerating 5.4 meters per second squared south for 5 seconds? So what is the displacement? So I'm looking for displacement. It says that it has an initial velocity of 33.3 meters per second north, so that's my VI. It begins accelerating 5.4 meters per second squared south, that's my acceleration. And then 5.00 seconds would be our time. Now, I see I've got north and south there. So I'm going to have to pick something to be my positive direction. And I'm going to choose north. So I'm going to switch acceleration from 5.4 meters per second squared south to negative 5.4 meters per second squared north. Now I have to select a formula. And the formula on my sheet that has displacement, initial velocity, acceleration, and time is d equals vit plus half at squared. Now, displacement is already isolated, so I just have to substitute my numbers in. I'll run it through my calculator. 33.3 multiplied by 5 gives me 166.5. Each number had three significant figures. Since I was multiplying my answers, three significant figures, and that's why I underline the 5. And then half multiplied by negative 5.4 multiplied by 5.00 squared gives me negative 67.5. Again, 5.4 only has two significant figures and 5.00 had three. So my answer was only allowed to have two significant figures. That is why, again, I underline the five. So 166.5 plus negative 67.5 gives me 99 meters north because north is my positive direction and 99 with two significant figures because both numbers were good to the decimal place so that means my answer is only good to the decimal place in example three we have someone jogging forward with a velocity of 2.5 meters per second south they slow down and begin to backpedal with a final velocity of 3.7 meters per second north we have to find the displacement from the initial change in velocity, if we're given an acceleration that was continuous, and it was equal to negative 2.3 meters per second squared south. 
So we were, at the beginning, jogging 2.5 meters per second south. That's our initial velocity. We're told we have a final velocity of 3.7 meters per second north. We're asked to find the displacement. And we're told the acceleration is continuous. It's equal to negative 2.3 meters per second squared south. Now that I have my variable list, I'll make sure they're all going the same direction. So I think it's easiest to switch the final velocity to self. So it becomes negative 3.7 meters per second self. I'll pick out a formula that has VI, VF, D, and A. So I'm going to use VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. Now I have to get displacement by itself. First thing I'm going to do is move VI squared. It's being added to 2AD, so I will subtract it from both sides. Now I have VF squared subtract VI squared on the left and 2AD on the right. Now to get displacement by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by 2A. So 2A and 2A will factor out. And I have displacement equal to VF squared subtract VI squared all over 2A. Now I can sum my numbers in. Negative 3.7 squared equals 13.69 meters squared per second squared, as that squared does distribute into the brackets. 2.5 meters per second. When we square that, that gives us 6.25 meters squared per second squared. Scoring is multiplication, so when we look at significant figure rules, we will follow the multiplication rules. 3.7 had two significant figures, so 13.69 is two significant figures. 2.5 had two significant figures, so when I squared it, 6.25 has two significant figures. And on the bottom, of course, 2 multiplied by negative 2.3 gives us negative 4.6 meters per second squared. Now I'm going to do the subtraction on the top. 13.69 is good to the decimal. 6.25 is good to one after the decimal. So when I subtract, my answer is only good to the decimal. So 7.44 is my full answer, but I'm going to underline the 44 because I'm only allowed to have significant figures to the decimal using my adding and subtracting rules. Now I haven't done this often, but we're going to look at the units. A meter and a meter will factor out. The second squared and second squared will factor out. Will leave, which will leave me with just a single meters in the numerator. 7.44 divided by negative 4.6 gives me negative 1.617 meters, and then south is my positive direction. I'm going to switch that to north, and I wind up with an answer of 2 meters north. Example 4. What is the initial velocity of a car if it has an acceleration of 3.2 meters per second squared east, covers a 212 meter section of pavement towards the east in a period of 6.3 seconds? So what is the initial velocity? I'm looking for VI. We're told the acceleration is 3.2 meters per second squared east. It's covering 212 meters of pavement towards the east. So that's our displacement, 212 meters east in a time of 6.3 seconds. I want a formula, so I'll look on my formula sheet. I want a formula that contains VI, A, D, and T. So I'm going to use D equals VIT plus half AT squared. To get VI by itself, I have to first move half AT squared. And I'm going to do that by subtracting it from both sides. So half AT squared and half AT squared will cancel each other out. And I wind up with D subtract half AT squared equals VIT. Now to get VI by itself, I'm going to have to get T away from VI. So I'm going to divide both sides by T. The T's will factor out. And now VI is by itself. Now I can substitute numbers in. Displacement is 212 meters. Subtract half A which is 3.2 meters per second squared, multiply by t squared, which is 6.3, and divided by t, which is 6.3. If we look at the units, because I'm going to first do half a t squared, the seconds, when it gets squared, 
will be on the top and it will factor out the second squared on the bottom and that whole entire chunk is going to leave us with units of just meters. So half multiplied by 3.2 multiplied by 6.3 multiplied by 6.3 gives me 63.504 and again we said the unit's going to be meters coming out of that. Now I'm going to do the subtraction in the numerator. So 212 subtract 63.504 gives me 148.496. Remember that was subtraction. So significant figure rules for subtraction have to be used. 212 is good to the decimal. 63 was good to the decimal. Therefore, 148.496 is good to the decimal. And I underline the 496 as they are not significant figures. Now I... Do division, 148.496 divided by 6.3 gives me 23.57. That's meters per second. So my final answer is 24 meters per second east. Example 5. A car is traveling 10.0 meters per second west, accelerating at 3.4 meters per second squared west over a distance of 123 meters west. What is the final velocity of the car? Well, 10.0 meters per second west, I'm not sure about right now. So accelerates, well, acceleration is 3.4 meters per second squared west. The distance is 123 meters west. And since I'm given direction, that's displacement. So our displacement is 123 meters west. It says, what is the final velocity? So VF is our unknown. So that means by default, 10.0 meters per second, that's a velocity and it has to be my initial velocity. So what formula do I have that has acceleration, displacement, final velocity, and initial velocity? That'd be VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. Now I have to get VF by itself, so that means I have to get rid of that square. So I will square root both sides. And then I will have VF by itself. VF is the square root of VI squared plus 2AD. Now that VF has been isolated, I can substitute numbers in. So VI is equal to 10. And I'll square that plus 2 multiplied by the acceleration multiplied by the displacement. Now 10 squared is equal to 100. And when the 10 is squared, that makes meters per second meters squared per second squared. 2 multiplied by 3.4 multiplied by 123 gives me 836.4. That's only going to have two significant figures because we're multiplying and the acceleration only had two significant figures. So the 6.4 is underlined. I'm going to add those two numbers. That gives me 936.4. Again, the 6 and the 4 were underlined in the 836 because it was only good to the nearest tens position. So that means 936.4 is only good to the nearest tens. So the 6 and 4 are still underlined. I'm going to square root that. Since I'm square rooting, that means my answer is plus or minus 30.6006 meters per second. So that's going to give me, after rounding, 31 meters per second. But is that east or west? because the answer could be positive or the answer could be negative. Well, logic says if the car was traveling west and it accelerated to go even faster west and it covered a distance that was west, the final velocity of the car must be west. But if we were unsure, we would probably want to plug these numbers into a different formula. For example, we could have found uh, acceleration equals change in velocity over time. We could have found time first. Then we could have used a different formula to solve for final velocity. And that means we would not have used the square root sign. And then we would know for sure that the answer was west. So the final answer, 31 meters per second west. Example six, a car's acceleration is constant as it goes from 92 kilometers an hour to 125 kilometers an hour. So it's going from 92 to 125. So 92 kilometers an hour is our initial. So velocity initial, 92 kilometers an hour. And that should be in meters per second. Now remember, the magic number that we talked about in grade 11 was 3.6. We also have to remember that meters per second is always smaller. 
So I will divide 92 by 3.6 and that will give me meters per second. So our initial velocity is 25.55 repeating meters per second split two significant figures because 92 kilometers an hour had two significant figures. It is going to 125 kilometers an hour. So our final velocity is 125 kilometers an hour. Again, I'll divide that by 3.6 to convert it into meters per second. And that gives me 34.72 repeating meters per second. Again, three significant figures because 125 kilometers an hour had three significant figures. We're told this takes place in 12.4 seconds. So that is our time. And it says, what is the car's displacement during this period of acceleration? So we are looking for displacement. So I want a formula that contains VI, VF, T, and D. So I'm going to use D equals VI plus VF over 2 multiplied by T. It's already set up so that displacement is isolated, so I can substitute my numbers in. The first step, once I've substituted numbers in, will be to do what's inside the brackets, and that is going to be our addition step. So 25.55 repeating plus 34.72 repeating gives me 60.27 repeating. It was an, an addition step. 25.55 was good to the decimal, 34.7 was good to one place after the decimal. So if we line them up in columns, we were only good significant figure wise to the decimal and that's why the two and seven are underlined. So 60.27 repeating with two significant figures divided by two and then multiply by 12.4. I'm gonna do that all in one step because it's all multiplication division. And my answer will have two significant figures because 60.27 repeating only had two significant figures. My calculator says 373.722 meters, which will give me a final answer of then positive 370 meters. I was not given a direction such as east, west, north, or south. So that means my direction will have to be written as either in the positive or negative direction. So I made sure that my answer had a positive, so I know that the 370 meters is in the positive direction. Example 7, the Great Wiggle Cart Race. Well, we'd have to be in class in order to do that. So uh, we're going to skip that for now. Here are some of the things that you're going to have to keep in mind while you're working through the assignment that some of the questions in the assignment will require you to use the earlier velocity and acceleration formulas. That's acceleration is change in velocity over time. And the change in velocity equals final velocity, subtract initial velocity, because we know change is always final, subtract initial. We'll have to use gravity as acceleration when applicable. Whee! I've stopped. Ah, I'm falling. An object going up slows due to gravity, and that an object falling speeds up due to gravity. In both situations, the acceleration is 9.80 meters per second squared down. Keep in mind that we are going to negate wind resistance. An object will always accelerate at 9.80 meters per second squared down when climbing or falling. And if an object is caught from the same height it was thrown, of the total time it was in the air, it will have spent half its time climbing and half its time falling. An object thrown upward will slow until it hits zero meters per second. That's at its highest point. And then it begins to gain speed downward until it hits the ground. So if I take a ball and throw it directly up into the air, at its highest point, it is traveling zero meters per second. Gravity then will start to push it down and it will start to speed up in the downward direction. Well, I hope you enjoyed our time together. That brought us to the end of yet another lesson. You're good to complete the Kin 2 Kinematics 2 assignment, page 6 in the handout.